Welcome everyone, Happy New Year. I hope everyone had a great holiday season. I just wanted to give you a SCAR update. So we are working on another pool, but right now we're trying to fine tune the metrics of our original pool. We've run into some issues and I want to voice them here. And I may get some disdain for this video or some ill comments, but I'm just going to be completely transparent with you. Our server hasn't been down for one microsecond for the entire duration of the test net, but it is very difficult to maintain accuracy with winning blocks because, first of all, the network forks consistently. So you have to write scripts in order to prevent yourself from going onto another chain. So it's really the pools that are doing the best have timed this perfectly and make sure that they restart their nodes or they restart their servers at the exact possible second when they're supposed to be assigned blocks. However, I don't think that this is a great solution to move forward. I think that the testnet should be a little bit more smooth or the process should be a little bit more smooth. But this is the testnet after all. What can you do? I, it's, it's very analogous. Maybe my expectations were a little too high at the beginning. Maybe my understanding of the system was just a little bit skewed. And I'm trying to understand exactly the intricacies of running the stake pool. And, you know, we've, we've signed over 500 blocks so far. And if you look at our performance compared to other pools, a lot of people would say it would be lagging. But this is not because our server is down. It's just that we get forked, forked to oblivion. Sometimes we're in an infinite loop of forks. This has nothing to do with our server. This just has to do with the protocol itself. And this is testnet after all, so you can't expect too much at an early stage. I, I, it's very analogous to, I don't know, I was in like seventh or eighth grade, maybe a little bit younger. And uh, no, maybe it was ninth grade. I think it was ninth grade. And the Xbox, the Xbox 360 just came out. And prior to the Xbox 360 releasing, there was a lot of press, there was a lot of speculation about what it could do. You saw some gameplay, and obviously that gameplay footage was probably run on a PC, and uh, the specs were just modded out to make sure that it favored the game completely. But when, I was so excited to get the actual Xbox 360. And, you know, when I actually got it, I ended up getting the Red Ring of Death, which meant that my console failed shortly after getting it. And this is just because the expectations were set so high, but the product delivering was just a lot lower than what the expectations were set. But over time, the product has increased in popularity and increased in quality. So, you know, you have multiple iterations of the Xbox, and now we have the Xbox One and Xbox Pro and all the Xboxes that are out, and they're far significantly better than the original Xbox 360. So these things take time. Um, a couple questions I do have for, I don't know, the test net in general. and. I'm not really sure I understand the complete direction. Before, people like to talk about the saturation point. I don't think that it was properly implemented. We've talked with people that work at IOHK regarding the saturation point. Some seem to not even understand that it's been implemented or it has been implemented or it has not been implemented. If you go to the multiple metric sites, obviously they put pools in red that are oversaturated. Um, so there's obviously something in effect, but as to exactly how this decentralizes the network even more, I'm not 100% sure. Owners are, are opening up multiple pools, which we plan to do in the future as well. Does that affect the decentralized nature of the Cardano ecosystem? I would argue yes, because you know, multiple some pool owners opening up multiple pools, it's not more or less decentralized. It's just you know it would argue that it's more centralized. Another thing I have to understand is that the reward percentages are a lot higher than initially anticipated. Some pools are receiving very high rewards, others are not compared to how many blocks you're actually signing, so these things fluctuate as time goes on. So um, I'm not 100% sure what's going on because I anticipated that 20 to 30% of the network would be staking and I anticipated that this was going to be largely um, consumer based so people that actually held ADA in their wallets so if you add IOHK's value, Emergo's value and Cardano Foundation this would probably be closer to the 40-50% of ADA that's actually being staked it's significantly less there's 9.7 billion ADA that's being staked 
and the wallets of IOHK Emergo and the Cardano Foundation, around 700 million for the Cardano Foundation, 2 billion for the Emergo, and 2.4 billion for IOHK, I believe, roughly estimated, of course. And we don't know Emergo's wallet address, so they probably would have been selling. Um, so they're probably under 2 billion. So if we add all of that, that's roughly around 5 billion. There's 9.7 billion ADA staked currently. So that means that's that's around 5 billion ADA that's being staked from regular people, regular ADA holders. But there's 31 billion ADA in the system. So I would argue that the participation in the testnet is a lot lower than I initially anticipated. I wanted the rewards to be lower because that would indicate that there's a higher percentage of people staking, and that would translate into mainnet for staking potential so if there are a lot of people staking within the test net chances are they would roll over to the main net and if they rolled over to the main net that means the the utility of cardano would be used even more um, and price would probably appreciate greatly but since there's not really that period of time yes people are accumulating their ada rewards how is this long term how does this affect us long term i'm not 100 percent sure I would say it would be a negative. It would take longer for the price to appreciate, but we'll have to see when we hit mainnet. But um, so my expectations for how much ADA was actually staked, it's not what I expected. So I expected a lot more participation within the network. So that's that. And I also don't expect IOHK to be, well, they quote unquote put the saturation point which um, into the ecosystem, which is 1% of the total stake value. And all their pools are overstaked, so oversaturated, which means that they're getting less rewards and it's inflating at a greater rate than that what they're staking, which is a little bit worrisome because I'm not 100% sure why IOHK wants to necessarily decrease their value right now because we still haven't released a lot of project. Uh, projects within the Cardano ecosystem yet so we need investment when the time comes for dApps and smart contracts and this and that and this and that so if they're decreasing the value of their bags um, I'm not sure where the funding will come especially if they're ch channeling this back into the Cardano ecosystem maybe it's the Cardano foundation that's going to be just solely responsible for this but I I, just, I think the more money the better so I want IOHK to be as rich as possible uh, for the time being. I really do. I don't think it's uh, necessarily good for them to diminish their bags at a rate that's greater than those of the community. Um, but you may, your, your opinion may differ from mine. Just my thoughts, just my, just my opinion. I've been having a little bit of trouble. I get a lot of questions from Daedalus and Yodoi. I haven't been able to log into Daedalus for the past couple of days, so I have to probably delete the files and restart Daedalus. And you know I've been having a lot of issues with as well. So I'm sorry, I'm trying to recreate some of the problems that the community members have been having, but I can't even log in right now, so I'm just waiting until um, you know my spot in the QE kind of cl clears up and then uh, I'll be able to better diagnose these problems. But um, you know, we're still going strong. I mean, we're, we're here for the long term. This is, a, this is a growing process. Just a couple of concerns that I had and uh, questions I had for the Cardano ecosystem. You know, um, I'm just looking at this from a business angle. Um, the saturation point, I think that before it made sense. Now, I don't know. I mean, you guys could say that, you know, because my pool was oversaturated or I had... First of all, I wasn't expecting all this delegation to SCAR at all. So thank you for all your support. But now that I see what the saturation point is kind of doing, it's kind of just, it, it's, it's, it's washing away ADA back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. People are gonna be pool hopping for a while, which, which is understandable. But I hope that IOHK has a good, clear strategy to maximize their bags. So when the time comes and then they need to spend that money or if funds ever go low, they're able to draw some of their money from, from their staking and make sure they maximize that. So let's see what happens. Let's see, let's see how we progress. And um, we're here to answer your questions. Once again, our pool has been up 100% of the time. Unfortunately, we've hit some bad bumps over the, over, the, over the course of the past few weeks. Just getting stuck in forks. Once again, this is, I, I, don't, I don't consider this our issue. 
Uh, we've been monitoring the situation. Our, our team member, Vaclav, he's very highly experienced. And uh, the amount of hours that we've put into this, you have, you have no idea. So we are constantly monitoring the situation. So, um, sometimes it's just, you know, where you are, what peers you're connected to. But it is a puzzle. It's a jigsaw puzzle, and we're just trying to figure it out. But um, I hope everyone has a good week, and uh, we'll, we'll talk again soon. All right. Thank you, everyone.